Hi, welcome to Life is a Treasure podcast. I'm your hostess, Michelle Durand, and this is episode number 34, Tourette's Awareness. Tourette's syndrome is a neurological condition that causes us to have tics. I say us because I myself have Tourette's syndrome. And June 7th of 2020 will be recognized as Tourette's Awareness Day. And I felt like this would be a great opportunity to talk about what Tourette's syndrome is and what it's not, and a few people that you may know. However, you never knew they had Tourette's. So I would like to just get started with what is Tourette's syndrome. And in this episode, I may call it TS for short for Tourette's syndrome. So with Tourette's, and being that it's a neurological condition, I have been diagnosed in my 20s that I had Tourette's syndrome, and I'll share my journey in this episode as well. So to begin with, it is a genetic and environmental condition. So it can be inherited. It can also be influenced or increased by um, a child's environment. The onset of the tics, which are the symptoms of Tourette syndrome, is usually around age six or seven, right when they're starting school. So um, I'm going to share a little bit more about that as I go along. What are tics? Tics are involuntary, repetitive twitches, sounds, movements. For example, you may see someone nod their head. That was one of my tics. And there, it's done repetitively and it's involuntary means that it, you cannot stop that urge. You can suppress it but you cannot control it. And I'm speaking from my own experience. I'm not a doctor, but I am a person who has lived with Tourette's my entire life. And I remember in middle school when I would nod my head, I was teased. I was called a butterfly. Well, I thought that was a bad thing, but now I really love the analogy of a butterfly because I think butterflies are beautiful. And people who have Tourette's syndrome are not disabled. Some may be. There are cases that are mild, and then there's cases that are very severe. And the tics can wax and wane. That means they can come and they can go. The tics change throughout the your life and it is research shows that it affects boys more so than girls i think it's rare more rare to see a girl who has tourette's than a man and i'm going to share some people that you probably know that are famous or um i don't like that word but very successful in the public eye that have tourette's and so this episode is, I really feel, and I've always felt this way my entire adult life, that I would love to bring awareness to adults because children who have Tourette's are too young to understand what is happening to their little body and why they can't stop it and why they can't control it. Yet the adults and big people around them are telling them to stop or they're in school and they're told to sit still and be quiet. It's hard. You cannot expect a child with Tourette's syndrome to sit still. I'm sorry. That is the truth. So shout out to my parents for their patience with me because raising a child with Tourette's is extremely challenging. Um, so back to the repetitive movements, as far as if you can't sit still, they may twitch, they may be always like tapping their pencil on the desk, um, or kicking the chair in front of them. And these things seem very obnoxious to others who are looking on or who are being disrupted by that. But the fact is that they cannot control it. I mean, that's just what it is. That is the challenging part of this Tourette syndrome. Also, along with that, so that's called motor tics, which affect the body and the muscles, okay? But then there's also the tics that are involuntary sounds. It could be coughing over and over. It could be um, 
a lot of people, if you've heard of Tourette's, most likely people that I've talked to who had never heard of Tourette's, the only way they have known about it was it being made fun of on television or in movies. So unfortunately, we are made fun of and it causes a lot of embarrassment. And I don't like that part of it. And that's why I'm speaking out about this. That's why I want to bring awareness of education instead of just being ridiculed. I believe it's important to understand that we are real people who have real feelings. And this topic should not be made fun of. So the vocal tics and the motor tics is how a doctor would describe them for movements of the body and sounds that, and it could be cursing, unfortunately, and that is a very why it's made fun of. You know, people say they're cursing and they say, oh, I have Tourette's. Well, that's not funny. That's not a joke to me. That hurts my feelings and it hurts a child's feelings if that's something that they're going through. The reason that they call it Tourette's syndrome is that most of the time, not only are the tics involved, but also is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, also known as ADHD, and obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, and anxiety. Anxiety is, I completely understand. I have struggled with anxiety my entire life. There's times where my anxiety is so extremely high that I had to go to the doctor or the hospital. And I've had to take medicine. I've took medicine for my Tourette syndrome. I've taken medicine for anxiety. And I am not against medication. I think that under a really good doctor that you trust, and especially someone who specializes in Tourette's, That is extremely important. If you have a child and you're seeking medical attention, make sure that doctor is educated and aware of Tourette syndrome and anxiety. I created an episode also on mental health awareness, and I talk about a lot of these topics um, in more detail. Episode 31, I will link it in the show notes. So as you can tell probably by now, The worst thing you can do with someone who has Tourette's is to tell them to be quiet, to stop that and to sit still or, you know, they cannot control. So bringing awareness will allow you to become understanding. It will allow you to have compassion and kindness to others. And episode 31 I just talked about is mental health awareness. Be kind to your mind. Very good episode. Please listen to that if you are interested in this topic as well as other mental health topics. So as I said, yes, we can suppress our tics. Um, We cannot control them. There is a total different thing. And suppressing means like, okay, I'm just going to hold this energy in until I'm in a safe place where I can release the energy and the tics. So with that being said, if you have a child or someone that you love who has Tourette's, give them space. Give them private time. If you have a child, let them have their space. Make it really special for them that they feel loved and accepted just as they are. And give them a room and say, or a closet and say, this is where you can go to release your tics. And that is so helpful. And just give them that space and let them release. Give them things that Tool, toys that will help them to get their mind off of it. But more than just give them space. That's the biggest tip I can offer you right now. If you are taking care of someone who you love who's struggling with this. So there is no cure. There is no cure for Tourette's syndrome. There are ways and treatments to manage the tics. As I said, I've been on medication, different ones throughout my life. I wasn't on medication when I was pregnant. I do have two children. They do not have Tourette syndrome, thankfully. Um, But I was very educated and aware. And that's where I've learned about all this because I wanted to be prepared before I had children as to how to help them if I did have a child with Tourette syndrome. It affects the brain. It's from the brain. Neurological is brain, neurological disorder, and the nervous system as well. Beings, the body is involved um, through the nervous system, like through nodding your head or through sometimes kids will be punching themselves over and over. 
just doing repetitive movements over and over can cause sore muscles. So keep that in mind. You know, if your child has Tourette's and they say they're hurting, it's because their muscles are sore. And um, a really good relief tip for me was to go to the chiropractor. And chiropractors, there are some who treat children. And my children always went to the chiropractor as well. And I definitely recommend if you have a child with Tourette's or you yourself has it, Make sure you see a chiropractor to help you to just get your your um, alignment back and it'll just really help relieve a lot of stored energy that might be stuck. Tourette's causes a lot of embarrassment in public. We are shamed, we are ridiculed, but it's up to us whether we accept that embarrassment or not. You know, the best thing we can do is accept ourselves the way that we are and realize that there is nothing I can do. I cannot stop what my body's doing or what is coming out of my mouth. And so throughout my episodes, you might hear me might make a little clearing in my throat. That is, a ter- that is a tick. That's part of my Tourette's. It's who I am. And I have learned to offer myself self-compassion. And I do have an episode on that as well. You can easily find it. Just check on my website, lifeisatreasure.com. I always have it linked. And listen to the podcast tab. It has all of my episodes. And you will find the episode on self-compassion. Understanding yourself and accepting yourself and being aware of your challenges as well as your positive assets. Along with that, not only to be kind and compassionate to yourself, practice being kind and compassionate to others. You never know what someone else is going through. You may not be able to see the pain inside of them. You may not be able to see how much they're holding in their ticks and they are just struggling and silently suffering. Be kind to everyone. You never know what's going on in their life. I thank you for listening because you're educating yourself. And as you educate yourself, you're better able to help others. You can come up with strategies and things, ways to help people cope with their condition. This is not a disability. It is not a disability. We are not failed and we're not broken. We're different. You're different. Everyone is different. And you can love yourself just as you are and envelop your ticks and grow to love who you are with your ticks. Keep in mind that stress makes the condition worse. The ticks will increase during stressful times and also during hormone changes. So just be aware if you notice that, that is common. As far as coming up with strategies and coping mechanisms, I highly encourage you to do the research also. There's a lot of information and resources online. The best thing that you can do and offer your child is therapy. I am a highly, I highly encourage people to seek therapy. Um, there, and again, as I said with the doctors, make sure a therapist specializes in Tourette syndrome. You can find their information on their bio on their website. You can actually call and ask, are you familiar? Do you treat patients with Tourette syndrome? extremely important that they understand. I was surprised at how many doctors didn't even know what Tourette's was. So you don't want to go to someone who has no clue what it is. You want to do your own research and then ask if they specialize in Tourette syndrome. You can also find therapists online and they can meet virtually with you. Um, especially during this time right now with the pandemic, it's extremely challenging. And so there's no reason you can find therapy, telehealth online via video. I want to bring to your attention that there are a lot of people who are very, very successful in this world who have Tourette syndrome. Some of these you may know. Billie Eilish is a singer and she has Tourette's. 
Dan Aykroyd is a comedian and an actor, and he has Tourette's. David Beckham, famous soccer player, he has Tourette's. Howie Mandel, a comedian and a show host, has Tourette's. Steve Wallace, a NASCAR driver, has Tourette's. I, Michelle Durand, have Tourette's. We are not broken; we're just different. I challenge you to love those in your life just the way they are, accept them for who they are, and don't try to change them. I'd like to read to you a poem that was written by a young girl. Her name is Brittany Wolf, and I'm going to wrap this episode up, ending it with this poem. I found it on the Tourette Association of America, and I will have their website linked. It's Tourette.org. A Tourette poem. I feel the urge to move throughout my body. I hear the thoughts begin in my mind. Just let it out; it will feel better. Do it again. This that wasn't right. My body is something I should control. It's something I shouldn't be afraid of. But my power to control is lost, and I am forced to accept my battle. I move in ways I never want to do. My eyes blink, my feet kick, my head flicks, my stomach tightens. And my breath shortens. The tick feels complete, at least for now. The exhaustion sets in as the day ends, but that doesn't stop my body from moving, and I've lost all control. Sometimes the day ends in tears. While I lie on the couch in frustration, I close my eyes and take a deep breath, and hope for a better day tomorrow. Not every day is like this. Some days are really great without any movement, but my own. I feel powerful and strong, but even on the bad days, something tells me that I am stronger. I am stronger than I think I am, and maybe I have a purpose. The reason may not be clear now, but I know it will be some day. My disorder is part of me, but I am so much more than that. But even on the bad days, something tells me that I am stronger. I am stronger than I think I am. And you, my friends, are stronger than you think you are. Whatever you're facing in your life right now, you are stronger than that. I hope that this episode has brought you not only education but encouragement in some way. I hope that you can implement this information into your life to help you to be kind to yourself and to others. You never know what others are going through. As I leave you、um, with this episode, I just want to thank you all for your attention. For your listening, and I hope that this has given you some awareness of Tourette syndrome in a new light that maybe you've never heard it before. And if you would like to reach out to me, if you need any kind of guidance, I'm offering you a free 30-minute one-on-one mentorship session to discuss whatever it is. If it's how to deal with a child with Tourette. Any, if you're a parent of a child with Tourette's, if you yourself are struggling with Tourette's, reach out to me. I will have the link in the show notes, and I would like to offer you for my listeners a free thirty-minute one-on-one session. That's my gift to you, as my thank you for listening. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode, and until next time, peace, love, and joy.